Welcome to Edison Open House Global Healthcare 2022. In this session, we're highlighting the work of Oxford Biomedica, the leading cell and gene therapy company here in the UK. Its CEO, John Dawson, is here with me now. Hello, John. And it's almost a bit of deja vu, isn't it? Because we spoke a year ago when we were in the middle of a ferocious second wave. Here we are with another wave, this time of uh, Omicron. Uh, it's been an, a roller coaster year for you, especially because of your involvement with the AZ vaccine. It's been an amazing year, and I think we thought we had got through it, of course, but uh, here we are again, and um, we're prepared for whatever comes next. And uh, <laughs> let's, <laughs> which none of us have any idea. It's, I think it's the uncertainty that is actually so unsettling for everybody. But let's go on to uh, the subject of our discussion today. You've built this sector leading uh, lentivirus vector platform. Tell us a bit more about it and how it positions you in the market. It's been a very interesting journey to have this with us. Um, it's the lentivirus vector platform has been with the company since its formation back in 1996 and we've had it in various forms since then. We have worked in it for so long which is why we're so good at it. We have made lots of technologies to make it far better than we believe anybody else in the world at doing this as well and we are now to, in, to industrialise the process and therefore be able to produce more patient treatments for batch than we believe anybody else by the technologies we're working on. So it's something we've taken very seriously. Um, this doesn't happen by chance, it happens because we've worked hard at it. And um, I believe a lot of those technologies now could be used as well in the other vectors we're working on. Uh, the new ones, obviously working on the Dino viruses now with the AZ vaccine. And we've now decided to become vector agnostic and work in um, AAV uh, viral vectors as well. And that's another step forward. And again, we think a lot of our technologies that make us be able to produce more, should we say, doses per batch than anybody else uh, will apply into AAV and Adeno as well. Because now, of course, with the AZ vaccine, you've got that extraordinary uh, knowledge uh, and experience of working with the adenovirus vector. What, are, what do you see as the opportunities in these other uh, vector uh, um, sectors? If you predict forward and look at where the market can go and look at the outsourced viral vector production going, going forward, uh, we can see that the AAV part of the market is probably four to five times as great as anything else as the uh, other integrating vectors, uh, adenos and um, lentis put together. So by moving into AAV vectors with our technologies, we believe we can go in now and actually have a much bigger market to aim at and do a very good job for people. And of course, the market is so great because effectively, you need more a, a vector for AAV than you do for lentis in general. Now, of course, people have heard about your partnerships with AZ and Novartis, but what about your proprietary pipeline and how do you plan to advance that? We are a diversified company. We work on our CDMO business, which is um, cash flow self-sufficient, of course, with the work we're doing. But we also want to bring our own drugs forward as well. We work on something called OXB302, which is a CART 5T4. And that's heading for the clinic probably in about 18 to 24 months, should all go to plan. We also to work very hard on um, some new platforms, which are very important to us as well. This could be maybe the in vivo CART program, which could be revolutionizing the treatment of CARTs and uh, bring down the cost of treating patients because a lot of the cost in using CART programs is the uh, cell processing, where you take blood from the patient, extract the T cells, infuse that into the vector and then have to put it back into the patient's um, uh, body after that. So you have to leave the hospital to the centre, the centre back to the hospital. And you can imagine the costs of that can become quite significant. So an in vivo cart could be a, a much better approach. We also have, because of our technologies, the ability to produce enough vector to make working in the liver or the lung, where huge amounts of lentil vector are needed, um, cost efficient. So we think we can make that a much more cost efficient exercise to be able to treat patients there. And we believe that Lenti in the lung has a unique place, which can be probably a market leader in the future because of integrating nature of the vector. As I'm uh, listening to you, I'm struck by something which you're famous for at Oxford Biomedica, this diversified strategy, you know, not having all your eggs in one basket, but having lots of different uh, baskets. Um, do you see any changes to this diversified strategy? You know, are you going to be focusing on one area more than the other? I mean, the focus around the products would be thinking about therapeutic areas, what we can do and what we can make the best difference in. And 
to be fair, do the best job for patients. But of course, um, alongside that is our work with our partners on the CDMO side, where we do the bioprocessing and uh, of course a lot of process development there as well, to get the best possible returns on a batch we can make. And we think that makes us pretty unique in, in how we can do these things and how we can apply our technologies. So I think it's more of the same, but very focused on doing the right things for the patients in our own portfolio in the platforms that we're thinking about as well as in the drugs, but also, uh, keep doing a great job, the best job we can for our customers to make sure we give them the best possible returns as well. And what we're seeing is that the markets to work with customers is getting greater, not smaller, and it's a very exciting place to be in. And the world of strong gene therapy is growing very rapidly. And it's interesting that you're concentrating on bringing the cost down because that's one of the big breaks on these gene and, uh, and, and other advanced therapies is the cost of them. Without question, and it's uh, obviously a huge amount of cost goes into some of the, for example, the ex vivo um, carts. So you have to take, as I said before, you have to take blood from the body, send it to a centre, extract the T cells from that, treat them, and then put them into the vector back to the hospital again. If you can take out those steps, you can reduce the, the cost a lot further. And I work with also with lung and liver, um, certainly working in those areas and the things we're looking at. The original ways of making Lentivector, for example, you could not have made a drug that was at all cost efficient by using the old processes. We've had to use some of our major jump technologies here to be able to actually produce enough vector at a reasonable price to be able to treat patients adequately. Now, what developments should investors look out for in 2022? I mean, I always, I'm always worried to even say that because you know, um, thinking, about the, <laughs> thinking about what we're all going through at the moment. Well, we have a lot of plans, obviously. I mean, our strategy is very clear. We want to become vector agnostic in our CDMO business and potentially our products as well. So we want to have more partners. We want to think about bringing partners in for the other things we're working in now as well. So that's one thing that could be new partners or bringing new drugs in or more drugs with current partners. We want to think about driving forward our, um, our own portfolio and think about how we can get that into the clinic as quickly as possible. Think about new ideas always in that area too. But we also want to make sure we are advancing our technologies to give us this um, leading edge that we currently have and maintaining that in the future to make sure we can actually maintain this particular position of being the world leader in lentivirus vectors. We'd like to think we can move into being uh, a very significant company in the other vectors we're going into as well. So really great things there. But I think one of the great things about where we are as well is keep watching the sound gene therapy market. Um, Scott Gottlieb put it very well a few years back when he was at the FDA. He was talking about the fact that by 2025, you'd see 20 to 25 drugs being approved in sound gene therapy per annum. And um, that will become a reality and you will see a different treatment paradigm for patients going forward. John Dawson, it's always a pleasure talking to you and it's great to hear of the continued extraordinary success of Oxford Biomedica. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you very much and great to talk to you. Thank you. Bye-bye.